Well, welcome back. I am so excited to start recording again. Here it is. It's almost spring. It's knocking on the door. We're into March of 2022. We haven't had any regents exams in New York State since really January of 2020. So June 2022, it's been a long time coming. COVID, of course, is on the downslide. So we anticipate having the regents exams. And here we are at the regents exam schedule. It's been set up by the state. I just wanted to point it out to everybody. Here is the full schedule. Now, the times are going to change depending on what high school you're in. And um, again, these are suggested start times. There's windows where all of the high schools in New York State can start an exam. But I want to point out, of course, because this is a chemistry channel, we're dealing with the chemistry regents, which is going to be on June 16th of 2022 in the afternoon, whatever time you might, might start. It's March. It's not that far away. I have students this year that have never taken a Regents exam. It's going to be awesome. And of course, um, you know, you're going to have to put in some work between now and then. So I want to just point a few things out to you in this video and we'll get started. All right. You can find old Regents exams just by going on Google or some other search engine. Type in New York State Chem Regents. We're going to do that here. And here they are. Same thing with all your other Regents exams. Now, again, 2020 was the last Regents exam that was administered by the state since the pandemic. You can click on the plus sign. Here is the actual exam. Here is a scoring guide, a rating guide, and then the conversion chart. One of the big things you're going to want to do as we get closer to the exam is practice ex exam questions on your own. Don't leave it just up to what you're doing in class with your teacher. That's good, but if you don't put any work into this, it's a very difficult test to score well on. Now, here is an example of, of the booklet from 2020. And what I wanted to point out is part A and part B1 are your multiple choice questions. There's going to be 50 multiple choice questions on the exam. And it hits all of the different topics that you've done before. The reason why there's part A and then part B-1, part A is, is a lot of information, some going, of course, back to the table possibly, but not calculations. You get to part B1, now you have calculations and possibly, again, using those reference tables. Don't forget about those reference tables. They are very, very important. Then you get through your 50 multiple choice questions, and then you're on to part B-2 and part C. Part B-2, you're dealing with fill-in type answers. Uh, could be combination of information and calculations, pulling stuff from the reference tables. And typically in part B-2, when you have a set of questions, it's all under the same topic, as you see here. So this first three questions for this test have to do with atomic structure. Then you keep going. Now you have done ones that have to do with matter. If you get to parts, when, well, not if, but when you get to part C, now you're dealing with questions that come through out the whole, um, the whole year, all right? Not just in one unit. So we're going to go ahead and you're going to have questions from different units. For example, here you were dealing with chemical reactivity, then we're dealing with density, then we're dealing with valence electrons, et cetera. So the questions kind of pull from different parts of the course all in a series of questions. It's important, again, I can't stress this enough, that you practice on your own. 
going into the test, you want to maximize the number of questions, the multiple choice you are getting right. The multiple choice questions are going to be the most predictable ones for the test. Repeating a lot of multiple choice questions, you're going to see them come up maybe in various ways, but the same type of question come up over and over again. Part two, that's going to have some um, repetition, but not as much. They are definitely harder questions to answer because you don't have the choices in front of you. So you want to be really strong with the multiple choice going into the rest of the test. If you're not, then, you know, you could be bordering on failing or bordering on not getting mastery, which is an 85 or above. The other thing I wanted to do in, in this video very quickly is just point out to you what the, um, it's not a curve, but what the scale is going from the raw score to what you would get as a grade on the exam. Here I am back at the chemistry regions exams, and I'm going to click on conversion chart, and I'm just going to click on PDF. All right. Here is, for January 2020, the conversion chart. You get a raw score, right? There's 85 points that you can earn. And out of those 85, then, depending on where you land, then what happens is that raw score is turned into your scale score. Now, if we take a look at what you have to get to get a 65, you had to score raw 49 out of 85 points, and you have 165, okay? And then 50 and 51 are both 66s. So the conversion chart for chemistry is not very forgiving. In order to get, let's say, 49 divided by 85, just to know what you would have uh, gotten, that you would have had to answer 58% of the questions correctly to earn a 65, all right? Now, if you take a look here at 85, 85 and higher is considered mastery. If I take the raw score of 74 and I divide by 85, which was the number of questions, in order to earn an 85 on the chem regions, you would have had to answer 87% of the questions correctly. So the higher scores, literally New York State in the past, which I'm assuming will be the same for June, kind of scored down by a couple of points. and here, right, they'll bolster you up by a couple of points. And that's why it's called um, really a conversion chart and a scale as opposed to a curve, because a curve would mean that it's curving all in one direction. So no matter what, your raw score, you would get, you know, bump up by percentage points for the scale score, but not with chem. Chemistry is a tough subject. You want to do your best. You want to maximize your score. So you're going to have to do some studying on your own. Suggestions for that? Of course, pay attention in class. Do some questions on your own. All the Chem Regents exams are posted. Again, just Google NYS Chem Regents. They come up. You can come to my YouTube channel, NY Chem Coach. All of the recent uh, chemistry exams Pretty much going back to 2017, I have the answers explained on my YouTube channel. When you get something wrong, the key is don't ignore it. Figure out why you got it wrong so you correct your mistake and you won't make it again. And as always, you, you're just going to have to do a little bit of work. I know you can do it. And good luck. And hopefully, you will subscribe to the channel. I'll be putting updates up. And if you have any questions, you can always put those in the comments, and I will um, try to either address them in a, in a separate video or write you back. Again, good luck.